My name is Tarv. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Estate Protocol. I am what they call a crypto native, which means I've uh, my default financial system growing up was crypto. I had a crypto wallet way before I had a bank account. So I think in these terms. And Estate Protocol is a platform that tokenizes real estate. And we just sold out our first listing in Dubai. And uh, there is a lot of interesting work happening in the, the real estate RWA space. I know there are a lot of people doing it with other assets, but I'm excited to talk about real estate here. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. We are stoked to have you here uh, with us, man. Amazing stuff happening in tokenization, particularly in real estate. I mean, it's such a large market. I was really surprised to realize how huge of a global market that is. Um, but we'll be diving into all of the uh, particulars with estate and uh, tokenized real estate here, here shortly. Um, what I'd like to do now is pivot a little bit and first give a shout out to Wolf Web 3 before we dive into some headlines. Um, if you guys don't know Wolf, uh, premier brand for insights on tokenization, deepens, just everything you want to know about blockchain. Um, so if you don't have them as a follow yet, go and check them out. Um, we're going to be moving the time next week to our definitive canonical time for the RWA space. So keep an eye out for that. But starting next week, you can join us at that consistent time week over week. So now we're going to jump into some industry news and updates. we got some big stuff happening for you. And some big boys have been cooking, like BlackRock big boys. That's $9 trillion with a T, asset under management. Uh, they're moving some money into this industry. Uh, they created a fund with Securitize to bring $100 million on chain. Um, and for so long, people were saying, hey, there's no way these large institutions are going to use public chains. We have things like JP Morgan Onyx. Um, well, lo and behold, $100 million has moved in to the, uh, to the industry which is fantastic. So huge things happen in there. Um, probably the most hilarious thing is that same address got sent some tornado cash assets, which for those who don't know that those are potentially very federally illegal assets just because they've been mixed up. Um, that could spell bad news for BlackRock potentially, but I mean, they kind of play by a different handbook, right? The most important thing is this though, these funds are on chain. Think about it like this, they have an address. Anytime BlackRock moves money, you can now follow that. Before, you'd have to dig through filings, paperwork, just boring stuff. I mean, yeah, it's on the internet, but you still have to find it. Now it's just as simple as going to a block explorer. So really big stuff is happening. And moving a nine-figure amount on chain shows that Fink is serious. He wasn't just talking you know, smoke when he was saying, hey, this is the first step towards a tokenized future. So crazy stuff happening there. I'm just going to open it up and just like, Tyler, you want to take a crack at that? Well, yeah, I was going to say uh, this is a pretty impressive move. I see Wolf's hand up. I don't know if Wolf wanted to chime in on this. I think one of the things I wanted to point out real quick is that uh, people were saying that BlackRock would never buy ETH to move money on a public blockchain like Ethereum. And uh, we've all been proven wrong if you thought that previously. And I think this is the beginning of what will be the internet versus internet debate uh, where the public rails end up winning out over the private ones. But that doesn't mean that the private ones become obsolete. Um, would love to hear from anybody up on the stage and their thoughts on the on the BlackRock developments. I know it's really moved the market a lot. Uh, I'll kick it over to Wolf first, though. Yeah, I was just going to say, guys, like, you know, um, typically these conversations haven't been RWA and DPINs, you know, for the most of crypto, and now it's really starting to get eyes on, and this space is focused on the proliferation of something we all believe in. So the best way you guys can support the space is by retweeting it. If you go to the pill on the bottom right, where it has the little comment button, click that thing, click retweet, everybody retweet the space right now. I know if you're in here, you care about the topic and we want to focus and, and I'm, I don't mean to digress from, from you, Tyler and you, Ray, but I know that this is an important topic and all the companies that are building in this space, they need eyes on. So if you believe in it, go on the bottom right, click that, click retweet right now, you know, support the space and I'll, I'll, I'll give it back over to Tyler. Sorry to interrupt guys. No, man, that's good. Thanks for the reminder. We'll, we'll chime in with that reminder every now and then. Um, I think what's interesting is that I, I think in many ways, BlackRock and Larry Fink have become the main character. Um, and I was thinking maybe Jorge would love to hear from you in terms of like institutional adoption and how you're seeing this play out. Um, have these events with BlackRock played out the way that you expected them to, or is this kind of like a little bit of a surprise in your opinion? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's, it, it is kind of like how we expected what I don't think at least on our end is that we expected it to happen this fast. Um, like when we envisioned Unlocked um, as a protocol to borrow against illiquid assets, our end goal was to do it against tokenized RWAs, but we very honestly thought it would happen something like 2027 or 2028, something like that. And that meanwhile, we would have to survive with like 
you know, illiquid assets such as like PFPs or gaming assets or stuff like that. Um, so it's come as a surprise, like how quickly uh, this has developed. And, and I, I think, you know, it's something that is maybe not inherent, so to say, to, to the technology that it's happened this fast. It is that we are lucky, lucky enough to have visionaries, um, and I'm saying visionaries in, in, the, in the context of, of where they are, like Larry, um, you know, who are willing to, to, to be innovators and to be at the forefront of innovation um, when they really don't need to do it much, right? Like at the end of the day, what they've done, it doesn't move the needle for them. Um, it probably has more risk than it has reward in the short term, uh, but it's people who just get it and just get DeFi and they get what, you know, uh, tokenization stands for in Web3. And and they're they're just helping us fight for that future, right? And I think we need to be we, we need to um, uh, be be kind of grateful for that as well. Yeah, good point, Jorge. What do you think, Corey? So I've actually been heavily involved with. So BlackRock was considering several solutions. Uh, Rotalo, which is a company I was part of, uh, as one of them, along with Securitize, Securency, Tokeny, yada yada. There's actually a lot of uh, I. Th- I think I can. I don't know if I can talk about this or not. So there are other large institutions, including uh, so you have Tokeny aligning with someone publicly. You have uh, Securency now bought by Wisdom Tree last year, um, and Vital is partnering with Sumitomo Financial, and they announced that publicly uh, in the Asian Japanese you know Times, as well as at Singapore's uh, you know the Singapore uh, Token Twenty Forty event last year. So you have this happening. As far as Larry Fink, once he made that statement, he was on the hook to publicly do something period um because he basically committed himself publicly that he's going to do you know we're tokenizing the world so i was not surprised and also based on the fact that i'm, I'm living breathing this stuff every day uh that that when I mean, we talked to these institutions that, that there wasn't going to be something that's happening and uh it wasn't a surprise that they this was the first of, of potentially many um uh projects and or uh, initiatives around that this is like a, this is like a, this is i know it sounds a lot of money but 100 million is like, like nothing it's it's a test pilot and we'll see how well uh the solution executes uh on securitize and right we all have our own opinions about different groups and wall gardens and by the way securitize erc 40 whites on the public blockchain the token itself is a private protocol and uh so it is controlled obviously by by blackrock uh, the, the built-in protocol has a controller function, which allows BlackRock to ensure it meets all the regulatory compliance that the SEC uh, uh, demands of it in terms of uh, managing it. And then finally, if y'all don't know this, the blockchain is still not recognized as a, a form of official ledger for um, keeping equity. Uh, and uh, so it's a cap table. And so there's actually a mirror table going on here. There's actually a database, traditional, and there's a token version of it. Uh, what you call it, it's basically called an enhanced um, token because there's a, a, it's not native, uh, meaning that there's actually a, a, a digital copy of that. So just, these are just little things that you might be interested in or not interested in, I don't know, about understanding some of the details underneath this. There is some marketing associated to this, obviously. There is some optics. Larry Fink is on the hook, so he does have to do something with this. But um, and it is, it's still early stages around all of this, guys. Uh, you know, you had Onyx doing their thing over there in Singapore, and things changed regulatory-wise that stopped that. Uh, you have stuff going on in Japan uh, with Sumitomo Financial and what we're doing with them. Uh, you have stuff, obviously, with Tokeny in Europe and, uh, you know, Securency and Wisdom Tree doing stuff with them. So there's a lot of really cool stuff going on. Uh, it's just a matter of, of when regulation and uh, the institutions feel comfortable enough to really kind of put feel on this. A hundred percent, hundred percent. And institutional time horizons a lot longer and fantastic points there. Um, Saw BC Bread roll up. Bread, what's going on, man? Always a pleasure to have you with us. Awesome, awesome. Glad he's in the house. He's probably eating some bread. He's probably. enjoying his his uh, his birthday. I think his birthday is today. Oh, what a happy birthday, dude! No, Let's go. Yeah. Heck yeah! Thirty-seven, yeah. I think. Happy I'm birthday. sorry to age you there, Bread. You're thirty-seven though. Uh, I'm forty-one. No, I'm I just too. started my journey to thirty-seven. Uh, 36 oh, today. 36. It's my okay. 37th, the start of my 37th trip around the sun now. So, yeah, Heck we yeah, made dude. It. Tokenizing solar laps. Let's go. That's the next thing. Let's go, dude. Yeah, it, it's, it's a lap, lap, lap to earn, bro. I'm, I'm going to bring it up. We're, we got this. Let's Cycle do it. to earn. I love it. I love it. Awesome. So, 
yeah, you play, uh, I'm assuming that everybody here is willing to spend money, um, being that we're in our 30s and we're all getting old and I have gray hair in my beard. And that's exactly what financial firms want to do. Just want to kind of use that as like a disc jockey chick -chick -chick turn to the next thing. Because um, I was kind of blown away. It turns out that financial firms, like AI is the hype. So of course, they're going to pour money into that. But there's now uh, on par investment um, between AI and DLT. Both have accelerated to, to match um, basically the investment of each other, which is huge because I figured AI would have eaten that lunch. Um, so... Yeah, that kind of blew my mind. It seems like tokenization is really pulling its weight behind the uh, scenes of Wall Street. Um, so huge stuff there. I mean, fund-based tokenization is a really hot play in that case, just to drop some alpha. Um, Tyler, saw you unmute, brother. What's your, uh, what's your thoughts on there? Yeah, well, this thing was interesting. So this headline was talking about how DLT investments are catching up to, to AI in terms of the way a lot of institutions are thinking about it. Uh, it's just clear that tokenization is very hot. And honestly, this kind of made me think of Scott. I actually saw this article that was talking about merging AI with real world assets. And it was written by this Colombian professor uh, who is the co-founder of OORT, which makes cloud solutions for decentralized AI. Um, and it also made me think of unlocked finance. So I'd love to hear from both of you guys. So I know Peak is doing uh, machine RWAs, which is super cool. Um, and we know that people are super interested in investing in RWAs and AI, and I know Peak is doing some super cool stuff in that area. Would love to hear from you, Ray, and then also would love to hear from Unlocked, uh, specifically about some of, I know you have some AI-enhanced underwriting tools. Um, so like what Ray and I are seeing from the institutional side is like clearly interest in real-world assets. The um, article was making the point that because compute is so valuable and AI, including the IP backing them, is becoming a super valuable commodity and super valuable thing that people want access to. It makes total sense that we would, of course, tokenize AI at some point. Oh yeah, Tyler, one hundred percent. Yeah, so like double cool news uh, lately with uh, uh, with us over at Peak, uh, we closed our our pre launch round uh, yesterday, uh, raised fifteen million dollars. Uh, that was really awesome. So it's really cool to see like Borderless Capital, Animoca. Um, Moon Rock, a lot of other people, you know, believe in the vision. But um, another uh, cool thing that we uh, ended up doing was we partnered with Fetch AI, and we actually joined their um, uh, AI foundation. And the reason why is, uh, like what you said, Tyler, we're, I mean, don't get me wrong, deep pins with devices and sensors, very awesome, right? Like, that's what, what we'll be built on. But the bigger vision is the machine RWA. So uh, communal humanoids, robo cafes, robo bartenders, uh, um, you know, uh, tokenizing, uh, smart mining and not mining, uh, crypto, like uh, mining actual, uh, commodities. Um, and you need, and I'm glad bread's up here cause I'm bread's actually working. Well, I don't want to say too much on recorded space, but bread is my AI. I want to say he's my AI agents guy. So you saw the writing on the wall with everybody, you know, with Elon playing that, you know, there needs to be universal basic income with all this AI stuff coming mixed with. Um, you know, uh, Samuel saying, Sam saying he's going to raise 7 trillion, uh, for, for compute. So, uh, it's just a no brainer that, uh, AI agents are going to be in almost every single machine, including, um, uh, IOT devices in which is why at peak, we call it EOT, the economy of things where the devices and machines, robots, uh, decentral, uh, decentralized fleet of cars, no matter what it is. Um, you know, can do it all autonomously, right? Bring it back to the, the decentralized factor, all this. So, yeah, we're really, uh, really bullish on everything, like we said, from uh, solar panels to vertical urban robo farms. Um, yeah, so, yeah, tokenizing it uh, and, and running AI agents uh, through it all. What am I going to get an AI agent in my toaster? You know, speaking of uh, bread, let's kick it over to BC Bread. So tell us, I see your hand up. You want to, you had something to say about the AI. Yeah, man. I mean, it's uh, something yeah, I'm working on very closely um, myself and a, a small team of guys uh, building out something called Amorphic. And um, what it is essentially is like one of the things that's being overlooked, I feel like, you know, because one of the hurdles with this industry is it's such a DeFi mentality. You know, and it's all kind of about the, you know, all the topics are, well, what are, what's the tokenomics model then? You know, and it's like, Jesus Christ, like not, not everything has to be about number go up. You know what I mean? And uh, I think one of the strongest things, you know, that blockchain can provide for AI agents, especially in these agentic systems is accountability, you know, and I think that that's truly where, you know, uh, teams are, are kind of missing the mark, you know, as like, I think it was Ray was saying earlier, you know, like 
we're just now starting to see, you know, like all of this AI and DLT, you know, distributed ledger technology, blockchain, right? Um, it, this AI and blockchain funding increase, you know, and all these teams are like going for funding. And all you have to do is mention the word deep in AI and blockchain and you get thrown a couple million dollars. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's great until it comes time to actually deliver, right? And if ultimately at the end of the day, it's just like, oh, we're using blockchain to earn people through their AI or we're using, you know, this AI to monitor what people are earning on blockchain, you know? And it's like, well, the strongest part to that is the security aspect, you know? And in an agenic system where you have multiple AI agents all communicating within each other, the layer of accountability and permissions and like access and admin roles and things like that, you know, blockchain is the, the obvious answer, you know? And it's interesting to see that just now, companies and teams are starting to recognize it um and again it's 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 one of those things especially as we're going through various pitches and accelerator programs and things like that with um with amorphic you know it, it's such a heady topic you know it's like you're dealing with people that have a very um a very small or i guess like a limited understanding of blockchain Right. And now AI is this new emerging thing and they've got a sort of a grasp on that too, you know? And so trying to explain essentially how these two, you know, Japanese type languages can somehow come together to form something that's understandable is, uh, is definitely a hurdle. And I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see this year, how teams that are building in the space are going to address it. Yeah. In fact, I think we can actually, ask Jorge a little bit about this. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I know Jorge, you and your team at Unlocked are, have um, some some way of using AI in part of your protocol. And I think this will be a good transition as we get close to actually talking about um, real world assets uh, tokenization for real estate. Um, Jorge, some of BC Bread's point here, points here are great. Like AI can be used to help a lot of different things when it comes to DLT. Um, one of the articles that uh, from the headlines we were talking about talked about how AI can help with transparency and secure, uh, security, but also capital efficiency and liquidity. And I know that Unlocked Finance is trying to solve the liquidity problem uh, for real world assets, NFTs, and other tokenized assets. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that, I mean, the, the main, I would say, value problem of AI integrated in what we do is accessibility. And the reason for this is if you look at RWA loans, historically, there's been very few of them. And the main reason for it is one, it's only possible via peer to peer, or it has been only possible via peer to peer until we've gone mainnet this week. Um, and the main reason for that is that uh, as opposed to fungible tokens, um, there is not like an automated way of determining a loan to value and a market value on which to apply that for any given asset, right? And when I say accessibility, uh, it's, you know, peer-to-peer -peer has the issue that it's not instant and that it's very rigid in terms of the terms and, and all that stuff and liquidity is very inefficient, so interest rates are extremely high, et cetera. But the main issue is that you can only really participate in a peer-to-peer -peer loans marketplace if you're a financial expert who wants, you know, you have your tokenized real estate, you, you, you post it on the marketplace to get an offer, and then people make you offers for loans, but how do you de how do you really analyze which one is the fairest and which one is the one you should take? Which one is not too aggressive so that you don't lose your collateral? Which one is not too conservative so that you're not being capital inefficient? That is only available to really a bunch of people who are again like you know we're not solving here what DeFi is here to solve, which is giving the everyday uh, you know average person access to things that they didn't have access before this is only accessible to the you know financial literate um you know the the economic elite again etc et and that's not what we're here for ai in this case what it does is it takes that burden off of you right it it basically analyzes every single asset determines a risk factor for each of it gives it a dynamic loan to value and a market value so that you don't you as a borrower you don't need to worry about which terms you should be getting you're always going to get the most fair terms both as a borrower and as a lender right um, so it's really merging these two things into that our, our next challenge here is how to decentralize that part right because the protocol is decentralized the ai that powers this is not yet and uh there is of course a lot of initiatives of running decentralized um, machine learning models which we're looking into and that's going to be one of one of our main challenges now that we have launched our you know our v2 um this week 
Awesome. Super exciting. And uh, why don't we toss it over to Tropic real quick, and then we'll get started in our deep dive on Estate Protocol. Yeah, I just want to uh, just add in real quick. I think it's very interesting, right, that you um, you kind of tied up a lot of things, or Jorge just kind of tied up a lot of things that I was going to throw in, uh, in the sense that uh, one of the cool things about the AI is it's not that we don't have the access to the information because it's there, but sifting through that is the hard part. And then just knowing what to ask it and how to leverage it to do the work for us. It's kind of like I remember back in the day, when I was in college, everyone thought I was a Google whiz because I could find everything on the internet. And it's just because I just knew what to type in. I understood the search. And I think that's how it kind of uh, queries out uh, your, I would say, uh, shifts out the power from being at one person. And so decentralizes that knowledge and being able to sift through all the information that's on the blockchain or in all these ledgers. And I think that's really cool. And in the sense that, you know, one of the things in you know, pivoting to the, the whole process of uh, properties and what have you Every time I speak about tokenizing properties, everyone always says to me, well, that just sounds like a timeshare. And I was like, well, the huge thing with timeshare, the reason why everyone hates timeshares is because there are so many problems that they couldn't solve without the blockchain. So, yeah, the, the, you know, we use all of these different words now. Like, we know we just went through a million acronyms, DPINs, uh, DLTs. Uh, we're talking about uh, so many different things. But at the end of the day, we're solving real world problems. And like, that's the cool thing that I like about this one. And I'm really excited to hear about it and how uh, it's going, really, because uh, people might write it off and say, oh, that's just the, the timeshare. Like, no, the reason why you hate timeshare is like, here's the solution. So, yeah, excited to hear more. Love it. Absolutely. Fantastic, fantastic points from, from Tropic and uh, from everyone here. Um, and speaking of sharing time, I just want to say I really appreciate a State Protocol, you know, sharing their time and coming out with us today. So I'm super, super stoked um, to introduce Parv from a State Protocol. Um, and so we're we'll going to sell you some timeshares, everybody. Absolutely, absolutely. We got, we, got, we got some timeshares that are hot for you. And in fact, the only way to get those timeshares is that little button that you're going to see at the top of the space, uh, the little arrow pointing up. If you click that, that'll share the space. Um, and then you can share our time with others. Look at that. That's what we call crypto. It could be a P2P economy. Wow, that was elegant, Ray. Good job, man. <laughs> I don't know about all that. I mean, I, we do what we can. We're, we're, we're Legos. Sometimes it's a castle. Sometimes it's uh, not nice to step on in the middle of the night. But Parv, how are we doing, man? Thanks so much for being with us today. Of course. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Awesome. Well, I guess we're just, we're just going to go ahead and like pitch the softball one. Naturally, we've had some fantastic conversation regarding the tokenization writ large. But uh, tell us in your own words, like, what, what is a state protocol? So Estate Protocol is a platform for tokenizing the world's most desirable real estate. And I focus on the desirable part because, uh, like, like you said, timeshares are not what people are interested in these days. And I feel like a big reason for that is because people have to go and live within in those timeshares. What we are doing here is tokenizing investment-grade real estate. And... The cool part about this is that people can go and start building their portfolio with just fifty dollars. Awesome! That is the uh, low, low price of almost free. I mean, you can't even get a, an appraisal on a a used car for fifty dollars these days. So that is awesome. I was doing a bit of due diligence on um, on the estate protocol beforehand, um, just to like, get an idea. And I've noticed that the, the <clears throat> uh, jurisdiction you picked to tokenize um, your first real estate property is in dubai now i know we got token 2049 coming up so like was that a play to like get them to open the the red carpet or why'd you guys choose dubai <laughs> that's that's a good angle too actually but dubai has positioned themselves in a very interesting way in the current world that has become sort of the the neutral place in in that region and i'm currently in switzerland and the history of this country has been built upon a financial system based on political neutrality so I am thinking that UAE and Dubai within it is, is taking that spot from Switzerland. There are a lot of other reasons. Um, Dubai is 95% immigrant. So 95% of the people that live in Dubai now were born elsewhere. So it has a long and steady stream of people coming in. And all the people that come in, they need a place to live. So real estate in Dubai is a very hard commodity it's, it's a it's one of the most desirable real estate places in the world 
absolutely. And uh, that kind of leads into my uh, my next inquiry because naturally you can tell by, by my voice, by me talking, I'm from the good old US of A, um, which used to be a thing where it's like, oh, wow, that's awesome. You get a free corn dog like every time you pay your taxes, but that doesn't happen anymore. Now I'm just locked out of various jurisdictions. So um, if I invest in this property, um, let's say, and I'm allowed to, do I then become the owner of that property um, via the estate protocol platform? You do become the owner. So we really focus on ring fencing the ownership here. So even in the worst case that estate protocol goes out of business, uh, you would still maintain the legal ownership if you buy one of these tokens. And that happens through our, our legal structure. Uh, when somebody buys a token on estate protocol, they are buying membership in a UK trust. And all the, all the UK trust does is own the asset itself. So UK trusts are, are SPVs and you are buying membership in those and those are ring fenced from estate protocol the company. Yeah, so can we, we talk about that jurisdic like that designation for a second because uh, so we see a lot of different tokenized real estate projects at RWA World and, and by the way for all the other speakers on the on the stage here feel free to chime in as well if you have questions for estate protocol. Um, basically uh, there's a lot of different structures and some of them uh, operate more like a fund. Some of them try to uh, create more of a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. Estate protocol seems to have a pretty unique structure from a regulatory perspective. And I think one of the things you would mention to me, Par, is that this offers better protections for the investors, uh, especially when it comes to the ownership structure. This is a UK-based trust entity structure. What are some of the advantages of that? So the big obvious one is that everyone knows the, the jurisdiction. Everyone has heard of somebody that has left a trust fund in the UK for their kids. Um, so it has a lot of trust in the, the laws of the jurisdiction already. The other big reason is that UK's jurisdiction task force, which is their uh, regulatory authority funded by the Ministry of Justice there, came out with a statement last year that outlined how existing English common law and trust law within it can be used to tokenize uh, assets in the real world. And that level of regulatory clarity has come from very few jurisdictions. I think UAE is another one that has come out, but um, UK's trust law is recognized the world over. English common law is almost standardized and used in over 100 countries. So understanding uh, the legal framework is going to be a lot easier for an international audience than when it comes to UK trust. And at the same time, they provide all the protection that uh, people need. And there's a reason why they've been used by wealthy people to leave, the, leave assets to their family or children or whatever for hundreds of years. Awesome. Corey, did you want to ask a question? Or Tropic. Whoever wants to go first, Corey or Tropic. All right, Corey's hand was up first, but seems like uh, maybe a little mic issue. Uh, the question I have um, was uh, directly related to uh, what was said about uh, Dubai. Um, I heard something very interesting, and I, if, I would love to know if you'd give any insight on this, that a lot of uh, properties and their rental and being able to show that is a cash flow pro uh, uh, property and so forth is easier to do in Dubai because like the, the rental records and that stuff, the financials, are actually on chain. That's what I heard. And I would love to know if there's any truth to that. And what is your experience with that? Because as someone who's looking for an investment grade property, I mean, that just seems like an easy sell, right? So <laughs> I'd love to hear more. That's exactly right. So they are not on chain, but Dubai's land department, the, the authority there whose responsibility is to manage all the real estate transactions going on, they publish data about every single deal in Dubai. So all rental contracts, all the sales that happen, commercial, residential, they publish all of that on this website called landdepartment.ae. And they also provide that as an API. So in the next version of our platform, we're going to plug that in, in, in our front end. And then every user that comes to us, they would be able to verify um, if the pricing that we offer is acceptable. Uh, so they would maybe be able to search for the building that uh, we have tokenized an apartment in and see what are the other apartments in that building, what price were they sold for. And then they have a better idea if this is a fair price or not. So Dubai and UAE in general, they really want to attract foreign capital. 
there are large jurisdictions in the world that are almost done with foreign investors buying up their real estate. But Dubai is on the exact opposite end. So they make it as easy as possible. They provide all the data that you need. And this is a big reason why I believe that Dubai is a very international investor friendly jurisdiction here. Awesome. So I'm going to toss it over to Corey, see if he got his mic fixed, and then we'll go over to Wolf. And then I want to introduce security token markets who just joined the stage. Corey, is your mic working now? Maybe not. Did he get rugged? Uh, Wolf, you want to jump in here while we wait for Corey? Thought about staying quiet too. I was just like, <laughs> no. Um, yeah, so I guess, man, I, I want to go kind of beginner with this. So, because I, I really don't understand. And as far as like incentivization to come to like a, a city or a nation state, we see this with Puerto Rico too. They basically got hit by a huge hurricane. They had 8 million people, and they went down to 3 million people because the hurricane that hit was so bad. So now they have a 4% tax rate if you bring in um, international funds that's not from the country, which kind of stinks for the locals because what ends up happening is, <laughs> is all the people that get the best benefits are people that aren't actually original citizens of Puerto Rico. So, But, um, yeah, I guess my question was for a state protocol, you know, I, I, and this is like heavy beginner. What is the benefits of tokenizing real estate instead of just selling it the way it is? Like, why even go down this path or down this road? What are the benefits, and is there any side effects to this? So the big obvious one is making it more accessible. If you want to buy a whole apartment or a whole house, you need to save up for years. As an average person, of course, you need to save up for years, even to have a deposit on a house. And for the tokenized real estate, it's easy to fractionalize. It's easy to create liquidity for the, the fractionalized um, properties. And that means that the average person can now begin investing in real estate. Um, general property ownership has been getting more and more out of hand for younger people. And that's a big problem. So tokenized real estate solves that one. There is also for the sellers, this adds an interesting dynamic um there is something called a liquidity premium which if the tokenized real estate world manages to add significant liquidity this would make the the tokenized side of the investment much more desirable because the sellers would attract a certain amount of liquidity premium on their properties there yeah so tokenizing real estate i mean there's so many different reasons why you might want to do it we kind of we kind of did gloss over this i'm so glad you brought this up charles um like a lot of different things, capital efficiency and liquidity, democratized access, transparency and security. I think Parv did a pretty good job talking about like that barrier to entry that's improved upon with tokenization. Um, I definitely think we should underline those points and make it clear that, yeah, with tokenized real estate, it allows access to an asset class that normally is very inefficient, uh, filled with paperwork and requires a lot of different behind the scenes uh, machinations. If anybody on the call here has ever sat through uh, signing real estate paperwork when you're buying a house, uh, you know the friction that I'm referring to. So, um, yeah, thank yeah. you for that, Charles, to get us that opportunity. Is there anything else you'd add there, Parv, on like just basics of tokenization 101 for real estate? Uh, yeah, no, the removal of all the hassle that you need to do, that's also a huge advantage for tokenized real estate. Yeah, that's all I want to add. So, I know, Corey, I'm hoping you got your mic fixed. You've had your hand up for a while. Yeah, no uh, thanks, guys. I have a, a few interesting questions um, uh, to, uh, you know, department and, and kind of this. One question I have is, and I think it would be useful for other people to hear this right now. I haven't looked into the protocol, but is this a Ethereum-based protocol? What, what, what blockchain is this running on? We are on Arbitrum right now. We're looking okay. at our uh, multi-chain future, so... Keep an eye on the space. The second question to that is, what happens if I lose my token? How do I how do I get my token back, or how do I that represents ownership or fractional ownership? So losing your token, when we talk about that in traditional crypto, it's very different from uh, this kind of asset because the the transfers are whitelisted at the token level. So even if you get hacked or somebody gets access to your wallet, they can't transfer it out to an unverified wallet. 
Yeah. Okay, so you have yeah you have a, you have a control transfer function in between. Got that? That makes sense. Like like a register does over there in the UK. Yeah. Yeah, that's somewhat right. So we don't control the the register, but once you're on the whitelist, um, as long as you're not from the US, the transfers are unrestricted. For US users, there's a one year lockup um, because of regulatory reasons. But even wow. wow. <laughs> Well, what happens if I, lose my, if I lose access to my wallet? Let's go down that scenario. If you lose access to your wallet and it can be proven, um, we can add a different wallet to your estate protocol account. So then then re reissue a new token because you can't move that token, right? Uh, that's right. We can't transfer the token. It would have to be reissued. Got it. Um, a recommendation for a future enhancement is to... As you know, assets can't be lost, really, and so the idea of owning the token and control of it's one thing, but I really do think it's cheaper to have an issuer-controlled function in there so that you just can move it out of that wallet that's lost into, say, a different wallet that gets whitelisted. So that's just an, uh, uh, something that we've done in the past, and I think it's a, it's a slight improvement to, to avoid burning costs and reissuing costs. And when you're talking about billions of assets, maybe in the future from a scaling perspective, that can start adding up, right? So uh, from a scale perspective. So it's something to think about on, on really yeah. having... Having the issuer of the, of, of the official issuer, because you have to paperwork this stuff anyways, uh, you know, with, with the legal authority of, of the county or the state or the jurisdiction that you're talking about. So having them be able to reissue this token or move the token uh, under a signature would probably be a really good thing to do. Um, finally, do y'all do, do y'all do whole home um, situation? So in the United States, those aren't securities, at least currently they're not. Um, and there's a lot of benefits, as, as mentioned earlier. Have you thought about doing a uh, whole home basically just reducing the friction and the cost and the paperwork to to buy and sell an actual individual home and are, are you looking at any u.s areas because the fun version of it unfortunately and this isn't legal advice because I'm, I'm not a, an sec lawyer but although my co-founder is that gets into securities realm with u.s investors and because the whole accreditation non-accreditation that's a problem for u.s people um, obviously, outside of the U.S., you, you, you can. The, the awesome idea, by the way, investing in a phone as, as a as a de democratized access for fifty dollars, awesome. But have you thought about whole home, which actually right now isn't considered a security in the U.S. and still reduces all that friction you're talking about in terms of middlemen and and you know, like for example, title insurance and title searches, all that can cost goes away, right? So have you thought about whole home stuff? We have thought about it and uh, a bunch of other directions for tokenized real estate as well. Um, this is just the start, by the way. We've just tokenized one apartment in Dubai for till now. Real estate is such a huge industry that we, we can do and we can take multiple different routes and end up with very positive results as long as we execute well. So the, the bigger challenge that we faced early on uh, when we started working on this in 2021 was to figure out where to focus. There is so much you can do in real estate. If you don't focus, um, you would get nothing done. So currently our focus is on fractionalized real estate. We have built the proof of concept. And the idea with this first deal was to test out what we built and it went well. So we can now use the same framework, awesome. same structure along many different types of real estate. We can do in, uh, the same thing in different jurisdictions. Um, we can tokenize whole homes, and we're going to be looking into it. And if someone's ever sold a, a house in the United States, you'll notice that you didn't have to do an SEC uh, offering. You did not have to file any sort of paperwork with the SEC. Interesting, right? And that's a great point that Corey yeah. brought up. Some other tokenized real estate platforms are looking into this as well. And uh, we've, we know the guys at Lofty, they have an approach that's similar to that. Um, and so and before we get on to some more questions for the estate protocol team, man, this time is flying by. I wanted to just quickly shout out our friends at Security Token Market. Thanks for joining the stage. Uh, Security Token Market's great uh, analytics platform for security tokens. Um, didn't know if you just wanted to say hi real quick. Uh, I don't know who's behind the security token account. Mike, is it Herwig? No, it's Jason this time around. How you guys doing? Hey, Jason. Thanks, Welcome. Tyler. And I appreciate you guys bringing us up. Um, you know, always, always love uh, hearing about new projects. Uh, we did cover a state protocol, actually, in one of our previous episodes of the security token show. Uh, so, you know, love what you guys are doing, Parv and team. Um, and I'm excited for the future. Oh.
that uh, we've been seeing, uh, you know, come up uh, on your timeline here. So excited to see us, you know, keep the conversation going. Uh, and yeah, actually, part of a question for you, since we're, we're here now, uh, you know, what future plans do you have for a state protocol right now in terms of, you know, listings or other jurisdictions that you're looking at? I know you guys did Dubai. Are there any other uh, environment or market that you guys are looking at? Yeah, so we have, we're going to have the second listing go live on 5th of April. So 5th of next month, you should, people should go and sign up and be ready for that. We are also looking at multiple other jurisdictions. Our head of real estate has a wide network in the U.S. So U.S. real estate is certainly something that's going to be on the platform pretty soon. But also from a, a few other jurisdictions, we've gotten a lot of interest. Um, Australia is one of them. Um, maybe even El Salvador, let's see. Very, very exciting. And as we've seen also, you know, you can get really creative depending on what jurisdiction and which investors you, uh, you know, take on, you know, obviously segmenting the U.S. off, uh, depending on what your goals are. Um, the, the nice thing about tokenized real estate is you can get uh, creative into the utility of it, you know, not just the access to the investing or access to potential liquidity, at least a little bit more than what you would see off chain. Uh, but we've also seen things in the DeFi space, such as collateralized loans. You know, the idea that you can, you know, lock up your, your security token ex in exchange for a loan, uh, you know, and making that process a little bit easier, which is also great. And what, you know, we would consider another form of liquidity, aside from just uh, trading on an alternative trading system or exchange. That's exactly right. So I think the real value with tokenized real estate starts coming on chain when people are able to um, borrow using these as collateral. Almost everyone has some level of debt on their real estate in the real world. So I see no reason why tokenized real estate should not have that. And since we did the first deal, we've had a lot of interest from um, other protocols and partners that they want to use our tokens as collateral. So this is also an update that's going to be out pretty soon. Very cool. That's that's amazing, and I think the investors on your platform would be uh, grateful for that for that option. So that's the investor uh, point of view. But from an issuer stand uh, standpoint, have you guys also explored, for example, refinancing uh, projects? You know, pre development projects uh, using tokenization rather than your your traditional option of you know taking a fat loan on it. Uh, we have considered it, but I think this is going to be one of the later areas of real estate that we get into because. It's just simpler to keep um, cash flow in real estate on chain. It's, if it's going to be bought out by thousands of international investors that have no idea what the local dynamics are, it's a lot easier and a lot simpler to tokenize the equity itself. And then if people want to add debt onto that, they can do that on other protocols. But at the token level, I want to keep it pure equity here and cash flowing. Great stuff, great stuff. Yeah, I'll hand the floor over anyone else that has any other questions uh, for the team and other uh, topics. Yeah, let's, let's toss out. it over to Tropic. You've had your hand up. Take it away, brother. Yeah, you guys are just uh, throwing some fire. But I just want to know, um, when these conversations are going on, um, uh, many of us, if, if you've ever been in a real estate transaction, uh, I've been fortunate enough to be on both sides. I was actually a realtor for a period of time in New York, and that was just a complete nightmare, especially upstate. But when these conversations are going on, which side do you find it to be uh, more like easier to lead with because I mean obviously um, everyone understands property but then the conversation that you're going to have with someone who will appreciate the tokenization is going to be very different so balancing those two in that conversation I was just wondering how does that normally go to get someone that's not already into this conversation you know to come in because obviously you have to bring in uh, uh, more funds and more people into it to, to grow the next property uh, listing and sale and so forth, right? Absolutely. So uh, these conversations seem to have different results based on who you talk to. If I'm talking to real estate owners in the US, for example, then they, they are super excited. They understand the value behind this and they want to jump onto that as soon as possible. So supply side, from places like the US or Dubai or elsewhere where supply of real estate is, is not in limited quantity, people really see the value and there's not much explaining I need to do there. On the buy side, uh, since these are physical real assets, um, 
the people that generally don't have access to high quality real estate in their own local jurisdictions are the ones that are most excited by this and i think there is great value in bringing this to crypto because those are also the places where crypto and stable coins tend to be used the most and tend to be held long term the most um we all are i i guess i don't know where everyone is but most of us are likely in jurisdictions with uh, a stable financial system so we are okay with investing in our uh, local jurisdictions if we have that option but there is a large group of people in the world that does not have that access and in terms of the buy side of things uh, we see the most interest the most excitement coming from um, that part of the world awesome we are truly approaching a a more global market and that's the thing breaking down barriers to entry for market access that means everybody gets a better price people who make and bring things to market more efficiently people who want to consume have more things available to them it's a win win um my interface is bugging out a bit but i've been told that crypto radish has a hand up crypto radish how are you doing? doing well man how are you guys wolf tyler ray how's it going guys i've got a um, i've got two questions for two people that are up here on this panel um first uh you know well i was going to go to security tokens market but before i go to security tokens market let me go to estate um estate protocol uh l let me ask you a question so i mean we can't deny the fact that we're in a global financial reset um you know the implementation of cbdc's and stuff you know so uh, now you've chosen arbitrum okay to go with uh, with the tokenization of real estate have you ever looked into the xrpl uh to be honest i have not it is very i mean i think that uh, it's worth taking a look at you know it's been really going under the radar uh xrp is the native token there i'm not shilling a project here <laughs> you know but you know i mean they're kind of like uh when you look at um you know tokens that do have clarity that are out there um, the battle with the SEC is kind of at its end, right? And, uh... You know, Crypto Radish, I actually do have a project that is tokenizing on XRPL, um, Gen M Partners. If you take a look at the RWA World account, we actually did a, a conversation with them. They're tokenizing a private fund, and they actually are doing it on XRPL. In fact, uh, I think Security Token Market might even have a connection with those guys. Um, so, yeah, there definitely are projects that are tokenizing on that You know, platform. Tyler, I'm, I'm part of an amazing and wonderful community uh, in the XRPL, and I would love to bring some of my community members um, into the space, right, where it is that we can all uh, give and take with each other and share, and share different opinions, right? I'm not an XRP maxi, man. Um, <laughs> Over everything, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, this is this is one thing that you know that I would love for uh, uh, for Estate Protocol to take a look into, you know, and um, and yeah. Uh, another another question that I did have was uh, for a security tokens market. You know, like I've been eyeballing the security tokens market for the past couple of years. Uh, I've got an account with uh, with T zero, and I'm somewhat involved. And um, uh, uh, security tokens market. Can you elaborate a little bit on what is going on with Ethereum, Prometheum? If you've heard of Prometheum, uh, uh, you know the 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 rumored news around the SAC perhaps going after Ethereum and dubbing Ethereum as a security. If this does happen. What implementations would uh, happen to those who chose to uh, utilize um, something such as Ethereum to tokenize, right? But then again, it's dubbed under security. I mean, what, what do you think, in your opinion, is going to be happening in the next um, year to come? Or, or what? Hey, hey, Radish, I just want to cut in here real quick, brother. This is this is really fantastic questions, and I got to tell you, I would love to dig into this. Trust me, as a head of research at RWA World, you got my nerd senses going on. I'm excited about it. Um, I have to chomp on the bit and pull myself back, though, because we brought a state protocol. We got him up here. Uh, we got uh, Parv featuring them. Um, we just got a couple minutes left, so I'm sorry to cut you off, but I just want to pivot it a little bit because I'm tracking what, what Parv is dropping here, and I'm really, really excited because now, in my mind, you know, I got some sweet, 
corporate real estate exposure in Dubai, which I'm really excited about. Um, but I have a problem. How do I, Parv, how do I divest from these tokens? Like, again, as an American, assuming I can sneak in here and or maybe not even sneak, of course, because please, SEC, leave me alone, get my tokens. How do I sell these things? So today you can go on matcha.xyz and list the tokens that you own for sale. That's a decentralized exchange. Um, and that acts as the secondary market today. But like we talked about earlier, there's going to be multiple other venues for liquidity. Now, if you're a U.S. user, that means that your tokens are locked for one year and you can't sell them for one year. But for everyone else in the world, it means that you can go out and list uh, your tokens on matcha.xyz right now. Awesome. Let's Fantastic. say that again for our audience. Let's make sure we got that. You can go on matcha.xyz right now and list the tokens that you own from a state protocol and if people want to buy these tokens and they don't see any supply left on our platform they can also go and matcha and see if there's any tokens for sale there in the secondary market i have a quick follow-up on that um ofac e even in europe it's important right um how do you enforce ofac checks so how do you stop kim jong-un from selling some of these tokens to raise money for nuclear weapons for example or what happened with 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 CZ and Binance and and money laundering? How do how are you how are you enforcing that if it's on a decentralized exchange? Uh, no, that's right. So the tokens are whitelisted at the token level itself, which means that it doesn't matter if you go on a decentralized exchange, if you want to hand over uh, I don't know whatever source of transfer that you might use. Uh, both wallets on for each transfer have to be on the whitelist. So, got it. Uh, so the, the, the receiving, so for me to participate and buy tokens, I have to KYC AML whitelist with you to be a receiver of it on the, on the decks. So you, you sort of already have that whitelist established for, for everyone that participates on the decks. That's exactly right. And we would not okay. whitelist Kim Jong un. No, I get it. Now that makes perfect <laughs> sense. Thanks for clarifying that. It's all whitelisted. Uh, on, on, I just can't send this to some random person who sends me money on a dex. So that makes a lot of sense. Awesome. Let's let's toss it over to Tropic. I see you got a question there. Then we're going to do some wrap ups in a little bit. We're right near the end. So Tropic, take it away, real quick. But those questions with the, uh, the the difference between the international buyers and the U.S. buyers. Um, does that apply to uh, a, a U.S. citizen living in the U.S. or is that just a like a like an overall blanket like every U.S. citizen, even if you're living in I don't know South Africa or Indonesia or something, um, and haven't really been stateside in four years? Is, is that like a uh, an individual thing, or is it more so based on location of, of jurisdiction where the person is living? If you know the answer to that, this depends on your current residency. Um, I sub I'm to be perfectly honest, I'm not one hundred percent sure about this. I would need to check this with my compliance team, but. Um, as far as I understand, uh, this is based on your current residence. So if you are a U.S. person living in Europe or, or something, then um, you are, you qualify as an international investor on the platform. Okay. I'm just wondering, because we know uh, within this uh, Web3 crypto space, like there's people living all over the, the world that, you know, might be a resident or a citizen of one country, but found it, uh, you know, they go where the weather is nice or something. Yeah, the law says U.S. person. Uh, what exactly is the definition of U.S. person is something that I need to um, check for the compliance team. I, I believe that it's citizenship level. Um, but again, I'm not a legal lawyer. I'm just from what I understand if, if, you're, if, you have to, if you're paying taxes to the U.S. and you're a citizen, then, then they may... They may again. This is you're, we're all small peanut stuff here. So if you're overseas, they probably won't even know. You won't. You're like a you're like a bug, right? No big deal. You're an ant. Um, but I have to say there is that component. But uh, anyway, uh, definitely check with a legal lawyer on 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 the residency piece. And that is one thing that is incredibly hard to tokenize. Oops, was, am I wrong? Oh snap! It says I'm. Nope, you're here. Oh you're goodness. Here. Okay, that's you're an here. Elon thing. We want to tokenize Elon and his. Uh, this platform here so I get a better interface. So maybe with the uh, RWA, I'm, I'm gonna message Fink, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, these are such fantastic points and I just wanna uh, to thank Parv and the State Protocol again for coming out. Um, this has just been fantastic, really great space. Um, we always wanna make sure that we're, we're bringing the high quality here on the Wolf Web3 podcast. Um, space, it's not a podcast. Dang, I really am getting old. 
Dang. Anyway, with that in mind, uh, Parv, any big news to share regarding Estate as we wrap things up here? The big thing is that we are coming out with the second listing on the 5th of April. And like we all know how this goes in crypto, the people that participate early in protocols, they, they get some benefits in the future. But 5th of April, oh. the second listing goes live. Go and sign up on Estate Protocol right now. There we go. You heard it here first. That's some sneaky alpha coming in fresh for you. And where can we learn more about Estate Protocol? Is that Estate Protocol dot dot com. com. Boom. The classic. We love it. We see a lot of dot IOs, dot random. So we got Estate Protocol. Dot XYZ. I mean, they're always coming up with new stuff. Um, oh, yeah. Dot, before dot, we give it. Go ahead. I was just going to say, before we give it to Estate for like the last word, I wanted to make sure we got a chance for BC Bread, Security Token, Corey, and Tropic. Each of you guys, if you guys wanted to give us some last closing thoughts before we wrap it up with Estate. Any thoughts or anything else before we... Uh, I love what they're doing. Um, I, I would... My key thing is making sure you have a protocol that scales and kind of covers all the scenarios, like a great ability with like any sort of regulation changes that may impact this. Again, just avoid the, the reminting and reprinting and the transfer and going from Ethereum, which might be a security, to, to, to Tezos or whatever, or to XRP. So just hopefully finding a, a standard so that you can avoid and kind of cover future proof, you know, the protocol for, for chaos reasons. So that'd be really cool to, to think about and look at. Other than that, I, I love what you're all doing. I love the fractionalization and the democratization of, 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 of people getting involved into assets because that leaves legacy versus paychecks. And I'm a big believer of that. And I don't like the accreditation rules that we have in the U.S., but it is what it is. So anyways, thumbs up on that. And I look forward to following you guys and seeing how you blow this out and uh, down the road. Thank you very much. We will oh, toss it. certainly look into the suggestion. Oh, let's toss it over to Brad. Yeah, I'm no, really, really, uh, really excited to see all the different teams building out um, their own flavor of these various RWAs and different kind of deep plan imp implementations. So, yeah, yeah, no, really, really great conversation today. And um, if any of you guys, you know, think that there is a way that you could probably integrate agentic systems into your flow that would reduce some friction points and you know that are verified on chain you know i'm always happy to discuss you know where uh where our overlaps are and how you know help me help you kind of thing sweet let's toss it over to jason at stm awesome now as usual you know great conversations always happening in on wolf and uh, you know, Tyler, have a great job moderating, and you know we're we're happy to be uh, you know continuously learning and you know following a state protocol and everything that they're doing. Uh, but just in general, for everyone listening in, you know, tokenization is the future of capital markets. I think that's pretty clear at this point in time. So you know, friendly invitation to everyone to join us down in Miami. We're actually hosting a conference on this very topic. It's called Tokenize This, May 9th through 11th. We hope a state protocol will be joining us as well as others in the space that we see some familiar faces in here. So it'll be a great time bringing the whole industry under one roof, three days, great content. But as usual, Wolf and Tyler, fantastic job. Uh, looking forward to future spaces. Thanks, man. And then uh, Tropic, any last words from you? And then we'll toss it over to Parv after that. Yeah, I am a little bummed that I'll be in Florida the week before, so I'll be missing that little uh, uh, conference, and that sucks for me. But other than that, you know, I think <laughs> this uh, conversation has been really great, and I think it's just awesome that uh, the the application of it, because again, if you ever had to go through the nightmare of doing any kind of transaction with this, I can think you can appreciate this. So, yeah, I would definitely be diving deeper into this, and I appreciate it. Always fun to hang out with Wolf and everything that's going on here. So, yeah, you guys are great. Sweet. And before we totally sign off, um, Estate, uh, Parv, let us know any last things, any last call to actions, and then Tyler, and, or excuse me, I'm Tyler, and then Ray and I will do our final sign off with Charles. <laughs> uh, thanks, Tyler. The, the only call to action here is for everyone to go and sign up on Estate Protocol because the second listing is going to be live on April 5th. Not a lot of time to go. And other than that, I just wanted to thank you guys uh, for, for hosting the space. Yeah, and if anyone on this space is not following Wolf Web 3 already, please do so. You know that this is a place where you're going to get consistent weekly content on a variety of different topics. Every Thursday, we talk about real-world assets. You're going to have myself and Ray. We are the co-founders of RWA World. You can check out our website, rwa.world, your front page resource for real-world assets. And uh, you can subscribe to our newsletter as well. Really grateful to Wolf Web 3 for hosting us as always. Be sure to give them a follow up. Uh, Ray, anything else you want to add here before we close out? 
Yeah, we were just talking about weird domain names. Now we got dot .world. I mean, I guess this one has to slide, right? It's rwa dot world that's something uh, but seriously i mean live on five april five is the second drop so definitely estateprotocol.com you guys want to check this out because i don't have a house in dubai but i'm about to so thanks so much for coming out appreciate each and every one of you have a wonderful excellent rest of your day whether that's thursday or if you have a time machine and you're in europe like parv and you're already getting towards friday that's cool too appreciate you we'll see you next week and don't forget sub to wolf web through you're gonna want to see that updated space time bye Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Great night.